Cherubs, this is the site of the Temple of Artemis. It was once one of the seven wonders of the world, and now it's a single column in a field. It was destroyed by a man named Herostratus in 358 BCE, who committed the arson because he thought it would make him famous. And despite the laws forbidding the mention of his name to prevent this, I'm talking about him and saying his name on camera in 2018 CE. Unfortunately, this stunt worked. So how is he able to burn down a large temple to a powerful goddess? Well, there's a good reason for that. The story goes that he burned it down on the exact day that Alexander the Great was born. The goddess Artemis was too preoccupied by this important birth to pay attention to her own temple, which allowed for Herostratus to burn it down. Now this is a great story. It's exactly the type of story that we all love and remember. In these types of stories, important sites have important endings. A structure like this needs to end in a legendary way, and this one did. It has two world-changing events in one, the destruction of an ancient wonder of the world and the birth of history's most famous general. A legendary end and a legendary start. But that's not actually how it happened. I mean, yes, it was burned down. It may have even burned down on the exact day that Alexander was born, though he was probably born two years later. But the temple was rebuilt. That wasn't its ending. The temple continued. We know that because it was burned down by the Goths again in 262 CE. But even that was not its end. There's evidence that it may have been repaired after that as well. These kinds of stories are repeated in our histories. Take the library at Alexandria, for instance, one of the most important structures in the history of the world. Its foundation had the lofty ambition to contain all human knowledge, and the pursuit of this vision created the intellectual space for Euclid to organize his elements, Galen to set a vision for medicine that would last many centuries, and many other beginnings of academic scholarship as we know it today. It's not around anymore, and its ending must have been epic. We almost need to believe that. We want to believe that Julius Caesar, while fighting his way out of Alexandria, set fire to the harbor and the library and destroyed all of its books. But that didn't happen. I mean, yes, it happened, but it didn't burn the library completely. There's plenty of evidence that the library survived. It kept going. And if it wasn't Caesar, then it must have been the Christians who burned it down around the same time that they killed Hypatia in the 5th century CE. If that's our story, then we could pit religion against rationality and scholarship. It would be a classic story of religion versus science. But there's plenty of evidence that it was still around after the Christians took over too. Most likely, the library was simply ignored until it fell apart and into the sea. Book technology changed, and the papyrus scrolls couldn't last forever. I'm really trying hard not to make a joke about their shelf life here. If those scrolls were not copied, they couldn't survive. If the knowledge contained in those scrolls wasn't important to the Christian community surrounding it, they simply weren't copied into new parchment codexes. So they're gone. Bugs ate them. Time dulled their ink. That's the most probable explanation for the destruction of this great library. Not through fire, but through lack of attention. These are the ruins of the great city of ancient Ephesus that once contained at the Temple of Artemis. It was once a spectacular tourist destination, the favorite city of Roman emperors, a city constantly being improved upon, and now it's a spectacular pile of stones. This also had a similar ending. Slowly, silt built up in the nearby harbor that was once the city's lifeblood, and it simply became a smaller and smaller city until it was abandoned. No big battle or fire or plague, it was just left behind over hundreds of years. So how did the Temple of Artemis actually meet its final ending? Why is it only a pillar in a field now? Slowly, pieces of it were removed to be used as building materials for Christian buildings in the capital city of the Byzantine Empire. It fell out of use, and its materials were repurposed to be used elsewhere. It was a gradual end to one of the most impressive structures in the history of mankind. If you like this video and the way I discuss art in general, please consider subscribing. I put out a new video about the 15th of every month. Thanks for watching.